Well, hello, everybody. Is anybody ready for some science tonight? Yeah. Well, you came to the right spot. So tonight, I am really, really excited because yet again, Dr. Lisa Will is here. And we are going to talk about some really recent news in the world of astronomy and planetary science in particular. Uh, obviously, water on Mars. Now, what does that mean? Are we talking rivers and lakes and stream beds and trout fishing? Are we making beer on Mars? <laughs> Not yet, but there's plans to make beer, which involves life, you know, yeast, good little buddies. So, yeah, so how awesome is it that, uh, yet again, Dr. Lisa Will has come back to share with us this very latest development that is pretty darn big news for NASA. So, without any further ado, Dr. Lisa Will. Thank you very much. As always, it is a pleasure to be here. Uh, now, when I hear water on Mars, I have to admit I'm a nerd. So nowadays, that makes me think of Doctor Who and one of my favorite Doctor Who episodes, uh, which is called the, water, the Waters of Mars. And the doctor lands on Mars during a time when the first Martian colony is there. And as they are growing food, the, gets contaminated by the water of Mars, which is contaminated by these creatures that want to take over. And even one drop of water will contaminate you and you can't go back to Earth. And so that's what I think of when I think the waters of Mars, even though I'm an astronomer, I have to admit that. All right, so, but I do want to mention if you are a fan of science fiction and fantasy as well as science that you know that discussion of water on Mars has been important for the last, over the last century because it's all about water. And so what I wanted to do tonight is talk a little bit about why we expect Mars to have water to begin with and then catch you up on the latest developments. And so back in the 1800s, Giovanni Schiaparelli was sketching Mars through a telescope. He referred to some of the lines there as canali. It got translated to canals, where canals usually has this human-made connotation behind it. And so when Percival Lowell of Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona, was sketching Mars through a telescope, he saw these sort of straight lines, which was very evocative of made structures, made by like people or aliens or something like that. And the last time I was at Lowell Observatory, I actually asked one of the docents, you know, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, we started using photography in astronomy, so why was Lowell still sketching? and making these very linear things. And the docent told me that Lowell did actually, didn't trust photography. He trusted his eyes more than anything that could show up on photographic plates. And so his sketches still were really evocative of these artificially made structures on Mars. But we now know that they aren't artificially made structures at all. He was just seeing sort of the difference between light and dark regions. This is an image of Mars that you can get through a really good backyard telescope. And you can see ice caps and you can see clouds. And so it's for reasons like this that we really expect to find water of a sort on Mars. But the question is whether or not there's any liquid water. Because there is definitely water as a vapor. A lot of the clouds that we see on Mars are actually water vapor clouds. There's also carbon dioxide or dry ice clouds as well. But when you see pictures like this, we even see them forming like the way clouds do on Earth. You might notice there's these sort of four dots of clouds over there on the upper left-hand side. They're forming over the tops of these large volcanoes, just like we see cloud formation over the tops of mountains here on Earth. And then we actually can see fog in Valles Marineris, or Mariner Valley, the largest canyon in the solar system. And so Mars has water in the form of water vapor. We've known that for a long time. In fact, uh, I wanted to show you this beautiful picture. This picture is from the Mars rover Opportunity. And I just love the textures. You see the sand dunes on the horizon, but you see these wispy clouds up in the sky. And those are water vapor clouds. So Mars has water in terms of vapor. But when you look at a picture like this, you're not seeing lakes. You're not seeing rivers. You're not seeing liquid water. And one of the reasons for this is because the Martian atmosphere is really, really, really thin. It's much thinner than the atmosphere of the Earth. So if you were to take your glass of water and set it out on the surface of Mars today, it would freeze. It couldn't stay as liquid. So finding liquid water on the surface of Mars right now would be unexpected, even though we know Mars had water in a lot of other forms. 
These are three images of the North Polar Cap of Mars. Uh, the triangular wedges are where data is missing because these were actually taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. And you'll notice that the Mars polar caps shrink with the seasons. So in summer they shrink and in winter they grow back. The part that's growing back is carbon dioxide ice, but the little cap that remains behind even in the summer, that's water ice. So we see water in the form of ice on Mars. Prettier pictures of the ice caps for you. Uh, this is a much closer up image of the North Polar Cap from, uh, I think, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, if I recall correctly. See these sort of beautiful structures in the ice. And then we see that this movement of the ice actually causes glacial valleys on Mars. And a lot of this is the motion of the CO2 ice, but we also see water ice motion as well. And here is a different perspective of that same region. And so the polar caps on Mars are really lovely. You see them blending in to the sandy dunes on the, on the other side. And so plenty of water on Mars in the form of ice. But I heard somebody earlier say, like, we're looking for life on Mars. And life as we know it, we don't see forming in ice. Now, this is a black and white image. It's not quite as pretty. But this is one of my favorite images of the polar caps of Mars. And yes, I know that means I have favorite images of the polar caps on Mars. But we're seeing sand dunes here. And if you take a look very carefully at the top, you'll notice that that polar cap is throwing a shadow. And so that the polar caps themselves are very high. You know, I think it's very easy to look at these pictures and think of them as being flat and not have a lot of material there. But they actually are very high cliffs that wane back and forth. More evidence for water on Mars. This is a picture from the Mars uh, Express Orbiter, which is a European Space Agency spacecraft. And that thing that looks like a puddle of ice is actually a puddle of water ice. Uh, that is almost, from looking at its chemical elements, uh, it is actually almost pure water ice with nothing else in it. And then you also might notice that the side of this crater looks sort of shiny or whitish. That's frost. We see frost forming on Mars, and we can actually see it wane and flow over the course of a day. So we know that there's ice frost in craters in the form of water. And then another bit of evidence that Mars has had a lot of water at some point is when you take a look at some of its craters. Uh, the crater on your left is a crater on the moon. The crater on your right is a crater on Mars. And the, this we often refer to as a splash crater. Because it looks like when it got hit, it was like dropping a rock into mud. Whereas the crater on the moon looks much more dry. It's like dropping a rock into very, very dry sand. And so people who study this sort of fluid motion have argued that this is evidence that Mars has water in the form of permafrost in its soil. So that if you were to reach, if you were standing on the surface of Mars and you were to reach down and you would grab that dirt, it'd be crunchy, kind of like frozen dirt in the winter if we had winter here. Okay, So uh, that would be what the surface of Mars would feel like. But I haven't shown you any evidence for like a lot of liquid water on the surface. But over time, as we've been able to see Mars surface better and better with our spacecraft, we've noticed evidence for water on the surface of Mars that would have had to have been there for a long period of time. What you're seeing here is a region of Mars that shows a lot. These things that look like veins are actually now what we refer to as channels on Mars. And these are regions where it looks like water had been on the surface for a very long time carving out these patterns. And one of the reasons why we think that is that we compare them back to features that we see here on the Earth. So for example, here is a canyon in northern Arizona. Here is a canyon on Mars. We see very similar shapes, even down to the way it tends to maneuver. And this is on a very uh, similar size scale, 10 kilometer scale here, 10 kilometer scale there. And so when we see features like this on the surface of another world, we say to ourselves, well, on Earth, this is made by water. So why wouldn't it have been made by liquid water on the surface of Mars? And so this is one of the arguments that Mars would have had a much thicker atmosphere in the past, able to keep the uh, water liquid on the surface uh, for longer periods of time. And here's another bit of evidence. Uh, this is a black and white image of one of those channels on Mars. Uh, this is part of a river here in the United States that feeds into the Mississippi River. 
And so once again, you can notice the similarity in the way this sort of path meanders on the surface. On Earth, this sort of feature is carved out by water on the, that's been hanging out on the surface for a long time. So on Mars, we think it would be the same. In fact, Mars has suffered from what we call the reverse greenhouse effect. We think that Mars was too far away from the sun uh, to sustain liquid water on the surface for a long time so that the greenhouse effect went in reverse. And what I mean by that is that instead of evaporating up more and more water into the atmosphere as vapor, it precipitated out as snow and ice and that the original Martian atmosphere is probably largely trapped in its surface. And it probably started with a thicker, warmer habitat. This very pretty texture uh, looks like a river delta here on Earth. And we actually think that this is part of a delta system on Mars as well. So we're not talking about tiny little rivulets of water out on the surface, uh, but large, large amounts of water. We think that nor the northern part of Mars, in fact, was probably an ocean at one point. And one of the most compelling arguments for a lot of water being on the surface of Mars at once are these things that we see that we call outflow channels, where you can tell that the water would have been flowing to the north and very rapidly from that teardrop shape where the water went around the crater and carved out that path. Uh, people who study fluid flow look at this and they can say, well, it can't be like lava because lava doesn't move fast enough to cause this sort of teardrop shape. And so all over the surface of Mars, we see evidence that it had liquid water on it at one point. And so the question is, is the liquid water still there somewhere underneath the surface? And then when the Mars Opportunity landed in Meridiani Planum, and one of the reasons why they picked this particular landing site for Mars Opportunity was they thought it was at one point perhaps a large lake. And so they wanted to see what the geology was like there. And they found these things that are often referred to as blueberries. They're not blueberries, right? They're not, they're not, they're not blueberries, as much as we might call them that. They're actually little rocks of iron oxide or hematite that on Earth we see forming in the presence of water. We think of iron, these, of, we think of hematite as needing water to form. And so when we see it in all, spread out all over this region, that once again argues that this particular location where Opportunity landed was once a lake. That's a great question. Uh, the average size of one of those blueberries is about half a centimeter. So we're not talking like boulders. They really are, I mean, a blueberry, quite frankly, is actually a really good description in, in terms of the size on average. But where the opportunity landed, they were all over the place. And it was just sort of surprising to, to land there and see this. Uh, and what they have highlight, what this image has highlighted, this little circular region, was where opportunity actually was studying the rock underneath the rock underneath is a very different material that does not require water to have formed. And so you can even then argue that the hematite formed in the presence of water and that water could have flowed and transported them to this particular location. And then we see this beautiful stratigraphy in some of the rocks, this sort of layering, and that on Earth is very commonly caused by sort of like water levels dropping over a long period of time. And so this is a region where the Opportunity Lander had investigated. And actually, Mars Curiosity is picking up a couple of the same things. I wanted to show you Mars Curiosity's latest selfie. This was just from a couple days ago. And uh, once again, remember, I know a lot of people, a lot of my students have asked me, how can it take a picture of itself? Like, there's nothing. All right, so the camera that it uses actually is quite maneuverable. So it's taking pictures of itself from all around and then they put it together. There's nothing actually on the surface of Mars taking this picture of Curiosity but itself, which is always just a little disturbing to look at sometimes. And so uh, Curiosity landed in Gale Crater. And Gale Crater was picked as a site because it has this big mountain in the middle and sort of a flat side or a flat plain adjacent to it. So it's been studying this region. And one of the first sets of images it brought back was this one. Here we have a region on Earth. Here we have a region on Mars. Got a one centimeter scale here, so we're looking at really tiny objects. And on Earth, this is part of a riverbed. 
where you're actually seeing rocks that had been tumbled in the water, embedded in the soil, staying there for a while. So you get this sort of conglomerate rock. And on Mars, it, we see very, very similar structures. And this is one of the first things that Curiosity found after it landed. And so there was, once again, I heard somebody as we started this, you know, looking for life on Mars. Why do we care about water? The NASA missions to Mars all are looking for water in part for that very reason. We would like to know if we could go there. Do we have to bring water with us, or is there a source of water there for uh, us to use? Now, one of the latest images from Curiosity is this one, where once again, you're seeing a very evocative stratigraphy in the rock, the sort of flat layering that makes this look like this was a lake bed. People who study water flow, who know it much better than I do, have decided that this is evidence that this region actually was the lake bed that we thought it could be when they picked this landing site. And so uh, I do want to mention a little bit about the colors in here, because it, Mars does not have a blue sky. And in a lot of the Curiosity images, you might have noticed that Mars has a blue sky. It's because what they are doing is they're color correcting the rock for the scientists so that the rock would look the same way as it would if we were to stand outside on Earth and investigate it. Because geologists are very hands-on people. That's why geologists would really love to go to Mars themselves. And so these are color corrected to make it look like if you were to stand outside on Earth, what would the rocks look like to you? Mars, not a blue sky. Okay, so this is a old lake bed. So we're really looking at cases indicating that water had been on Mars in a liquid form for a very, very, very long period of time. But the atmosphere is too thin and the average temperature is too cold for Mars to have water on the surface now for long <laughs> periods of time. Which is why some features on Mars that we see today have been so surprising. So the latest uh, data on what you have heard about actual liquid water on Mars has to do with these images from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. You see those little gray streaks? They don't look very exciting when you look at an image like this. But they're called re reoccurring slope lineae, which is a very fancy way of saying there's these lines on these slopes that reoccur. And what they mean by that is we've had enough spacecraft continuously in orbit around Mars that we can now notice when things change. And so the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter has been taking pictures of Mars, and what they've noticed is that those streaks, we only see them during the spring and the summer of Mars, and we don't see them in the fall and the winter. And that is evocative of the fact that something like water is causing these streaks. And so I have to admit, Hans put up on the Facebook page this animated GIF set showing images of Mars and seeing those uh, patterns occur, those changes over time. And also, isn't it amazing that we have enough spacecraft around Mars watching it all the time that we can actually see these changes? This is the sort of thing that's so exciting to me because uh, it used to be that you would just take a snapshot and that was it. But the fact that we've been able to do these continuous orbits and going over and over and over again and seeing these allows us to make these discoveries. And you have to admit, that's flow. That's something moving. And folks who study you know, uh, fluid flow say the thing that flows like that is water. The problem is it's not warm enough for the current atmospheric pressure of Mars to have this be liquid. So this has had scientists scratching their head for the last couple of years, because the original Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter observations of these happened a couple of years ago. But as we've continued to monitor these, and once again you can see these streaks here in the, on the crater wall here as well. What they finally were able to do was pick up the chemical signature of perchlorates, which is a kind of salt. And the reason why that is important is that if you take this sort of really, really, if, if you take this salt and you add a little bit of water to it and make this brine, the, that salt water would have a melting point much, much lower than just pure water. And so it could melt even at the current temperatures on the surface of Mars, and flow. And so when we're looking at evidence for water on Mars now, we actually do see liquid water flow 
I mean, you wouldn't want to fill your glasses with it and try to drink it because it's a really, really salty brine. This is the sort of thing you like dip your Thanksgiving turkey in and leave it in for a long period of time. I mean, it's saltier than the ocean. It's more like Great Salt Lake. Think of it that way. So the question is then, where is this water coming from that we see saturate the rock, this sort of salty, rocky material? And then it sort of seeps down. We're not it wouldn't even be like taking your water glass and having it flow on the surface. It's more like wet sand. And so we're actually refer to it as a seepage of water down these slopes. And so what would be really, really, really exciting is if these were due to an aquifer under the water, or excuse me, under the ground. We don't think that's it, though. That's not the most likely thing because we see these lines very sort of higher in altitude than the surrounding. We see them at the tops of these crater walls. And you think if it was an aquifer, it would come up at lower elevations. So what we actually think is happening here is that the pure chlorate, the salt, is leaching the water vapor from the air and is hydrating the salt, hydrating the soil, and that's what we see. We're seeing sort of the hydration sort of seep down the crater walls. Now, some people say, well, then that doesn't do us any good, right? We don't have an aquifer there underneath for us to use. But it's actually kind of exciting because what this process could possibly be doing is bringing more water from the air and putting it into the surface so that maybe it actually is resupplying aquifers underneath the Martian surface. But it is pretty spectacular that we live at a time where we finally actually have been able to see liquid water on the surface of Mars where we'd never seen it before. Because previous to this, the only planet that we'd seen liquid water on the surface was the Earth. And so this is the first time ever we've seen evidence for liquid water present currently on the surface of another world. So maybe Mars will never return back to this. This is an artist's representation of ancient Mars looking very Earth-like back before the reverse greenhouse effect took over and depleted its atmosphere and the uh, oceans went away. Maybe this will never happen to Mars again, but at least we have actually seen liquid water on the surface. And so Mars has water in the form of ice, vapor, and liquid. So that's the latest about water on Mars. Thank you very much. So no beer. Too salty for beer. That's, that's just not going to happen. So. All right. Well, you know, we do these talks uh, monthly. Well, I'm making an assumption. Would you like to come back again? Should we have her back again? Of course. Absolutely. All righty. So see that poster right there? The chemistry of rockets. And we have Mr. Shane Haggard right here, analytical chemist, who has spoken here before at Wavelength. So he will be here next Friday at 8 p.m. to talk all about rockets, how they work, and the very first live science demonstration happening right here in Wavelength. And so we're talking about rockets, and we're going to do some live science. I'm just going to leave that right there for you. We'll see you next Friday. Thank you. <laughs>